How's it going, everybody? Uh, today, I've got Greg from Alloy LLP. Uh, he's my real estate lawyer. And what I wanted to talk about today is what would happen if on possession day, there are delays, like the buyer doesn't have the funds to close on possession day. So let's say today is November 10. Greg, tell me if a buyer can't come up with the money today on November 10th, that's when possession is, what happens in the real estate deal? Sure. Yeah. So uh, as lawyers, our job is to always foresee as many uh, future potholes and problems as possible. You can always picture, uh, especially with real estate lawyers, we're looking to do a crystal ball and trying to peer into the future. And our goal is to avoid problems for you and for your clients. Um, one of the problems that lawyers have come up with in the past is exactly what you've described. Uh, the issue that, you know, we want to close, it's November 10th, uh, but for some reason, we don't have the closing funds on hand. Uh, maybe it's because there's a bank issue. Maybe it's because it's a short close, which means that we didn't get the documents to the bank in time. Maybe okay. there's a logistical issue getting the money from the bank to me. But whatever the reason, we just don't have the cash on hand. A long time ago, lawyers saw this as a potential problem and said, hold on a second. There's got to be a way that we can do this so that nobody loses in this scenario. Okay, well, what if we allow the buyers to move in as temporary tenants? And so we okay. created what we call a tenancy at will. Uh, now, tenancy at wills are very special. They're intended to be very short term. We're looking at maybe a week, maybe two. Uh, with new builds, it's a little bit of a different story. And I'm happy to kind of go into that on another call with you about new builds, because that's its own very special tenancy at will. Uh, but generally speaking, tenancy at wills are one to two week possessions where you don't have the funds in hand, but you forward what's called the cash difference to the other lawyer. Because um, the mortgage will never fully cover the purchase of the property. It'll cover most of the purchase of the property. Uh, I send what I have on hand to the other lawyer in trust. And I say, look, the property costs 200 grand, mortgage is for 170. My clients gave me 30. Here's 30. This is, a, this is to keep in your trust account and it's to keep safe as a show of good faith that my clients still want to buy the house. It's not their right. fault that they don't have the money. We still want to move in. Now, as long as the clients have insurance for the property, as long as I have a signed tenancy at will document on hand, and I have a transfer back document on hand, all of which I go through as part of my standard documents when I'm meeting with a client, yeah. uh, I can then ask the other lawyer, can my clients still move into the house? Can they still please take possession? Uh, nine times out of 10, the other lawyer says, yeah, absolutely. Uh, now the tenancy, because it is a tenancy, uh, does come at a cost. Um, for each day that the property is occupied, that we can't close the transaction in full, uh, right. we have to pay interest on the adjusted closing amount. So, for example, if the property was two hundred thousand, there was ten thousand dollars put down. There's one hundred ninety thousand dollars outstanding. We have to right. calculate interest based on that amount. Um, we have to pay prime plus three percent for every day that we don't close by noon. So. Uh, for example, it's it's Friday. Uh, if we were unable to close on a Friday, uh, we would have to pay interest for Friday to Saturday, Saturday to Sunday, yeah. Sunday to Monday. So it'd be three days of prime plus 10% broken down to the day. Uh, so on, on the $200,000 property, it'd be somewhere in the ballpark of $50 a day. Um, okay. It's a heck of a lot cheaper than staying at a hotel and a heck of a lot cheaper than renting a storage unit for your stuff. That makes sense. And you get to enjoy your house right away. Exactly. And the seller's out of it at that point because they were expecting to be out on possession day regardless. So the house is sitting there empty. Well, so so I want to pause you right there because you said nine times out of 10, the sellers just say, sure, you can have tenancy at will. Mm -hmm. What's that one out of 10? Like, why wouldn't the seller say, yeah, I want to sell this house so you can just move in? What What's the reason for that? It's It really depends on the tenant and their comfort of risk levels. Um, during COVID, we actually saw a lot more people saying, we're not going to grant tenancy at will. Um, because even though the property was vacant, even though they were out of there, even though you know their tenants were out of there, whatever the case was, uh, they were terrified of COVID generally. Uh, and that if somehow something went sideways with the deal after this, that the house was now going to be infested with COVID or something along those lines. Um, to be quite frank, from, from a lawyer's perspective, we have a lot of assurances and protections in place before I'm even, if, if I have a seller uh, and the other side's asking for tenancy at will, I have so many protections in place to protect the client should something go sideways 
that I almost always advise my clients, you should let these, these individuals in on a tenancy at will for exactly what we just talked about. The property's vacant. You're not there anymore. Uh, you will actually earn a little bit of money, weirdly enough, uh, by having them take possession on a tenancy at will basis. It doesn't cost you anything more in legal fees because real estate's flat fee, or at least the lawyers who normally deal with it are flat fee. Um, yeah. To to my experience, there is almost no reason to not grant a tenancy at will. Um, but some some people don't always listen to their lawyers. Uh, and so some here, here's a question numbers. for you. You're yeah. saying that you have a lot of protections on your side as a lawyer, right? Yeah. Let's just kind of play a what if game here. Sure. What if I've got buyers that needed to take tenancy at will? One week later, for some reason, they cannot get us the funds. Sure. How do we, what happens? Do we kick them out? Is that easy to do? So the, the first thing was the lawyers will talk to each other um, because it's it's incredibly rare that, that a tenancy at will is entered into in an instance where we're unable to close. That means that either one of the liars, lawyers uh, misrepresented something to the other uh, or the bank decided to pull funding for some reason. That's, yeah. that's extremely rare, but it, it's happened in the past. Um, but first things first, the lawyers talk to each other because if we think that we can reasonably still keep this deal alive and resolve everything a week from now, and the bank now is saying, yeah, yeah, the money will be there in a week. Okay, then that means we can still we can still keep the tenancy at will alive. We can sign an amendment. We can give another week. That's all fine. Right. Um, let's say the lawyers talk to each other and we say, nah, there's no way we're going to be able to close this. The deal's dead. Okay, well, first thing that the selling lawyer does is send the buying lawyer a notice and says, hey, your clients have to get out of the house. Um, part of the tenancy at will is an agreement that you will vacate the premises um, okay. upon request from the sellers, uh, assuming you can't actually close the transaction. So that's the first thing we do. Uh, now, if the buyers who are unable to close the transaction don't want to leave the house and say, no, we're, we're not leaving too bad. All right, well, now we have to go for a court order. Um, luckily, it's a relatively simple court order and it's a simple application. Um, this is a pretty cut and dry situation. There's a very, very clear contract. There's a very, very clear tenancy at will. We tell the judge the entire situation. The buyers will have an opportunity to say their piece and to explain what they think happened. But at the end of the day, they're in breach of the purchase contract. And, you know, the, the court will almost certainly grant the order. So, so okay. I, I know that what if is set as that sounds like a really, really unlikely scenario. Very so much so. Maybe we won't go down that path. Here's another question for you. Um, what if I, as the seller, let's pretend I'm the seller on this side. Mm -hmm. uh, you're telling me that you guys can't get the money today on Friday. Mm -hmm. You want tenancy at will and we'll resolve this on Monday. But I don't want to do that. I'm the seller. I, you know what? I changed my mind. I, mm -hmm. I don't want to sell my house to you guys. You guys couldn't come up with the funds on November 10th, which is our agreed possession. Mm -hmm. Can I back out or am I forced to, to give you guys tenancy at will? So you're not forced to give us tenancy at will, um, but at that point you are still locked into the contract. Um, okay. What ends up happening is when the buyer can't close for some reason, there's, there's two ways forward. We can either say, all right, look, we've got the money, it's coming, but logistically it's not here. Can you give us tenancy at will, which we've already talked about? Right. Uh, the alternative is if the seller doesn't want to give tenancy at will, then what ends up happening is the buyer has to pay what's called mortgage rate at mortgage amount. In other words, uh, the seller currently has a mortgage in the property, it, as most sellers do these days. It's, it's very rare that people just outright own the homes. Um, they Every single day that their deal is not closed, every single day they don't sell the property, their mortgage continues to accrue interest. Their mortgage continues to accrue costs. And so if they don't want to grant tenancy at will, or if the clients who are buying don't want to take possession on a tenancy at will basis, instead, we pay the interest and accumulating cost of the seller's mortgage every single day until we can close on the Monday. Okay, that's simple enough. So it's and, not really an out for the seller to just say, you didn't get the funds. I still have to honor the, the contract. Exactly. And, and at the end of the day, um, the mortgage rate of mortgage amount is to make sure that the seller isn't put out by the fact that the buyers couldn't get their money on time. Um, the seller should not suffer a loss as a result of logistic issues in the buyer's part. Right. So I got one last question, then I'm going to let you go on this topic. 
if I can't get out of this contract at the, as the seller, okay, mm -hmm. and you guys are paying me, what, what did you call that? Mortgage? Mortgage rate at mortgage amount. Okay. Mortgage rate at mortgage amount. What is the tipping point of me being able to release myself from the contract? Let's say a month goes by and you guys still have not paid me and you guys mm -hmm. are keeping me in this deal by paying mortgage rate at mortgage amount. Mm -hmm. Where, is there an eject button from this contract? How, what's the resolution? There's no there's no official eject point, but the, I mean, the short answer here is if the seller wants out of the contract and the buyer is in a position where they're unable to close within, I would normally say a week, okay. the seller's now got a really good argument to say, nope, I'm done with this. You guys couldn't close on time. You weren't able to do this. I've given you concessions. I'm gone. Your deposit's mine. Take care. Got it. So it, it's not a hard week, but I would generally say if we're a week out from the closing and we still don't have closing funds, that's the point that I call the other lawyer and I say, look, you know your client's not in the right here. You know your client's in the wrong. You know if we take this to court, it's going to go my client's way. Your clients should walk away from the deposit and uh, should pay my client what they owe me right now or close today. Um, right. But as long as the lawyers are in communication with each other, it should never reach that point um, because the buying lawyer is is anxious to make sure that the real estate deal closes because our goal as real estate lawyers is to make sure that all of the deals that we work on close. I'm going to be in regular communication with the bank to make sure that we're getting funding. And generally speaking, I inquire a couple of times prior to the funding date to make sure I'm going to have money on time. Um, the one example that I can think of in the past where it was an interesting example. So forgive this, this little trip down memory lane. No um, at one of the other firms I worked at in the past, we had an instance where we hired a courier to take funds from our office to the selling lawyer's office. Okay. Um, we sent the funds off at the courier. Uh, and we didn't hear from the courier for about four hours. And the other firm called us and said, where's the money? And we said, we don't know. We paid a courier to take it. Uh, turns out what actually happened is on the way from our office to the other lawyer's office, the courier found somebody who was unconscious in the middle of the road, got out of their car, performed CPR, called 911, saved this person's life had to go to the hospital with them because they were the person who came across them on the scene uh, and was released from the hospital after the person was taken into care. Uh, but it took about four hours uh, for that process to take place. And so the courier called us in a panic saying, oh no, I'm so sorry. We haven't gotten the funds to the other law firm. I, I politely called the other lawyer to explain the situation. They said, you know what? We understand. Human life comes before making sure that a few dollars and pennies make their way from point yeah. A to point B. So don't worry about it enjoy your weekend. And I'm glad we were able to get the deal done. So oh, uh, real estate lawyers, we're very collegial. We want to work together to make sure that things get done so that we don't end up in situations where because a courier stopped and saved someone's life, we're screaming at each other for the rest of the day. Right, right. Okay, so it, it's it's a cooperative environment for you guys as lawyers. Much, much more cooperative than a lot of areas of law, because at the end of the day, I want to sell my client's house. The other lawyer wants to buy my client's house. We have the same goal. It's just a matter of making sure we get there. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you talking about um, tenancy at will and just some fun little anecdotes that you have there about closing. Happy to, man. Appreciate your time. Um, if anybody's watching this and they're curious about other questions about real estate law, um, feel free to message us or comment here. We'd, we'd love to answer them in the future. Thank you, Greg, again. Have a great day, everybody. Absolutely. Thanks, Ariel. Take care.